G'day, I'm Mark Hope and welcome to Swift Almanac, where we teach you the basics of Swift in 10 minutes or less. Today's lesson is error handling. So let's have a look at error handling in 10 minutes or less. Okay, so one way you can use the internal error handling in Swift is by using the throw keyword, which indicates that a function will throw an error. Uh, there's an error protocol, uh, which is empty, doesn't do anything, there's no methods attached, uh, but it in indicates that an error can result. So let's look at a uh, basic example. So we have an enumeration, which is a vending machine error, and there are three cases. There's an invalid selection, uh, there's out of stock. Now, both of those two cases mean that something's just happened. And then we have this insufficient funds, uh, which is telling us, well, we don't have enough money, but it also returns as part of the error throwing process, how many coins we actually need. So in this instance, we could throw the vending machine error dot insufficient funds, and we need five more coins. So how do we handle errors? Okay, so we have a structure, uh, which is an item, and there are a, a, uh, the price of the item, which is an integer, number of coins, and we have the count, which is our inventory count, how many items we have. And then in the, uh, in the vending machine, we have variable inventory, which has uh, a candy bar uh, string, a, a, and this is basically a dictionary, a candy bar string with the items of price and count, and we have chips with their price and count, and we have pretzels with their uh, price and count, and how many coins have we deposited? We have none, and then we have uh, an internal method for vending this name, and it throws an error uh, if the item doesn't exist, if, or then it throws uh, an invalid selection error, if the count is uh, um, zero, then it throws a, an out of stock error. And if uh, we don't have enough coins deposited, then it throws an insufficient funds error. And it tells us that we're short by the price by the number of coins we've deposited. <coughs> now, if it doesn't throw any of these errors, then it keeps passing through the, the method and it says, this is the item, we're gonna remove one item, and uh, the inventory name equals the new item, and it dispenses that name. So let's have a look at another example. So we've got some favorite snacks uh, associated with Alice, who likes chips, Bob, who likes licorice, and Eve, who likes pretzels. Again, this is a dictionary. Uh, function buy the favorite snacks for the person from the vending machine and this throws uh, an error let the snack uh, equal the favorite snack of the person uh, otherwise it's a candy bar if the person doesn't exist and so we will try the vending machine uh, for the snack name so what's happening here is um, that if we look back at our original inventory our vending machine only contains candy bars, chips, and pretzels, uh, yet Bob, who likes licorice, and this product doesn't actually exist. So uh, what we can find out here is that we're getting invalid selections. Uh, if people don't have the right, uh, um, the right amount of funds, we get these other errors going on. So essentially to get through all of this, uh, we create a vending machine and we set the initial coins deposited to eight and then we can try and purchase various things. So we uh, have this do, we try to buy the favorite snacks for Alice and pass that to the vending machine and it will come back with an invalid selection, out of stock, please insert. But uh, if Alice supplies the right number of coins uh, for her favorite snack, which is chips, uh, chips requires 10, so it's going to, and she's only supplied eight, so she's going to come back with an error saying um, that uh, she needs two more chips. Now, let's look at converting errors to optional values. Now, if some throwing function 
uh, throws a return value of an int, then the return value in this case is one. So let x equals uh, optionally try some throwing function, uh, let y equals an optional int, do y equals try some throwing function, catch y equals nil. So if there is a problem, then we're going to be setting y equal to nil because it's an optional int. Uh, otherwise, y is going to be equal to the return value integer. So in this case, y could be uh, 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 have a value or it may be an optional value. Okay, so sometimes you want to disable error propagation and you want to do this with a lot of forethought, but essentially, uh, if you're making a system call that you know throws, but you know it's always going to return without error, for instance, um, if you are loading an image that and that image ships with your application, then you know that uh, it's never going to throw an error because uh, the application is shipped with the document. So in this case, we can use the bang system or try bang uh, and load the image. And so uh, this is going to um, ignore or disable the error propagation and just load the uh, photo into the, the photo uh, variable, or in this case, um, constant. So I'm just going to do the defer statement. Now defer allows you to defer processing until the end of the current code block. It allows you to close files that have been opened regardless of the status of any error handling. So in this case, we're doing a file read. So if the file exists, we're going to open that file and then we're going to defer the closing of the file. So this is telling the compiler that when process file leaves, we need to close the file. So we've got a try read line here. So perhaps the file's empty, perhaps we've got to the end of the uh, file, but this try is going to fail and it's going to throw a catch at some, uh, it's, going to th it's going to throw an error at some point. Uh, but before it throws it out, we need to close the file. So the basic uh, premise here is we set up this defer telling the compiler that it needs to run this uh, closure prior to uh, returning the error value. Makes things nice, neat and tidy. Cheers. Well, that's it for error handling. If you have any questions about the tutorial, then please leave a comment below or hit me up on Twitter at Swift Almanac. Please subscribe to the channel, it's free, and check out our website at www.swiftalmanac.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.